us. Well, it's uh, great to see a load of familiar faces, uh, some of whom I guess were here for the, for hands up those of you who were actually here for the launch of the first edition. Oh, that's a few of you, good. Thank you for coming back. Um, obviously you want to hear a bit more. Uh, well, we're not going to tell you too much more about what's in the book, because otherwise you wouldn't want to read it, would you? Uh, so you, Alison's given you a, a flavour of that. We thought this evening was more to be about, about you, so you can participate, and of course about the, the, the panellists. So we decided we'd send out a little questionnaire to start with, and thank you to the 63 people who, who completed it. Um, and to ask you just a few questions, get a feel for your views on the way work is going. Looking at some of these trends, like the move towards more self-employment, for example, some of the changes in the barriers to uh, the way we want to change working, and, and see what your views were as a stimulus, uh, partly for the panel to comment, and partly for you to see what your uh, collective views are. Uh, so, who responded? Well, we've got a reasonable mixture of male and female, um, and uh, most of you are between 40 and 60, uh, very few youngsters in the room are looking around, I can vouch for that, I think. Uh, or maybe the youngsters were too busy to, to actually fill the questionnaire. Uh, so that was, that was who, who actually uh, filled it in. Now what did you say? Uh, well, we asked uh, what your current employment status is, and then what you might like it to be uh, in five years time. Well, a few of you would like to be retired. Uh, because, uh, so that's the first uh, of the columns, sorry the colours haven't come out particularly well, um, in uh, the employed section, that's it. Um, and uh, the, the right hand column in the two of them is employed, so a significant number of you do not expect to be employed in five years time, uh, and uh, a growing number of you expect to be in the category of mixed of self-employed uh, and self-employed, which is interesting. So part-time employment, part-time doing your own thing, which is relatively unusual at the moment, and most employment structures don't really allow for that. Uh, so there's a, that's an interesting development. We, we can predict in the book there would be a move more towards self-employment, and there's an interesting study recently that we saw from the RSA that said, that predicted, I think by 2017, in the UK there would be more self-employed people than there are people working in the public sector, which is kind of an astonishing thought. Just looking at the way that, obviously, the public sector numbers are going down, the self-employed uh, are going up. And that's, that's, so you're not uh, unusual as a, as a group. Um, now, we asked you then, what do you think are the main barriers uh, that stop people agile working in, in organisations as opposed to self-employed. Uh, lack of trust uh, comes out top, which is hardly surprising uh, given that we think that's critical and hence we did the trust principles in the book. Um, but um, again, not totally surprising, second in line is middle manager resistance. And that's something we've all seen in a lot of organisations, that even if the top uh, strategic directors get it, uh, future work being something to do with a critical need for the culture of their business, there's a kind of layer of clay underneath them which is uh, resistant. Uh, and senior leaders are an important part of the day. Lack of support from senior leaders is also a problem. And then things like fear of change and so on. Time, we thought results-based working was something we looked at in the book quite thoroughly because that seems to be a trend. We thought maybe time-based reward systems and time-based billing, if everything's done by the hour, as often happens in firms like this one, then, then you're essentially measuring input all the time rather than that one. Uh, and those are barriers, but not as important as, as the others. So the panel may want to comment a little bit on these uh, a little later. You also um, had uh, an other category as well, and we've got quite a selection of other barriers that people came up with. So what we're doing is taking these results, and I'm going to write a short report, and as a reward for those of you that filled it in, you get a copy of, of the report. Or any of you ask us nicely afterwards, maybe we'll also send it. Um, now, do you expect a revolution in working practices in the next decade? This was a question we asked as part of the survey we did for the, for the book. 
And we were quite surprised that the, a high percentage of managers in our survey uh, said, yes, they do think there's going to be a revolution. And you fit in absolutely with that. So almost two thirds of you are saying, yes, you do expect a, a we used to do that word revolution deliberately to make it fairly extreme, saying within the next decade there is going to be some sort of revolution in working practices. 27% of you say no, and uh, a few don't know. So we've got a revolution coming, let's uh, see what happens. Um, okay, long working hours, something Alice has mentioned already. Um, uh, do you see, the first question is, there's a still a trend toward longer hours. Now we thought maybe with the recession, things might have changed a bit, maybe with more emphasis on family-friendly policies and work-life balance, all these things, there actually might be a, a, a move against the long hours culture. Well, I'm sorry to say there isn't. Something like 90% of you say there is still a trend towards longer hours. So that that is still here. We need to think maybe of a way of breaking, somehow breaking that long hours culture, because it's clearly highly endemic in, in organisations, uh, certainly in, in the UK and Western economies. Um, so we thought, well, maybe some people are starting to reject it, and yes, so about a third of you are saying, yes, people are rejecting long hours. So some people are voting with their feet. If they don't want to work the long hours in corporate culture, and they can't find a way of working part-time, shorter hours, or whatever, then they are simply saying, that's it, for the sake of my lifestyle, for my family, or for my personal sanity, uh, you know, I'm going to leave the rat race and do something myself. And hence the move maybe towards more self-employment. Because a number of these people have worked their way through the corporate organisation, have got competences that they can go and sell themselves in the open market, and are saying, that's it, I quit, I'll go and set up my own business. Uh, the internet makes that much easier these days as well, of course, the, the barriers to entry to start your own little business, whatever you're doing, is that much lower. I think it's a reflection of um, people's uh, perceptions of younger, of younger people coming into the workforce rejecting long yes. hours as well. Yes, yeah. again, again, we cover generations in the book, and a lot of people talk about you know, generation uh, Y, generation Z coming through, etc. Um, and uh, essentially, these are the digital natives coming through, questioning the old patterns of work and rejecting some of the long hours culture. Now, we're asking, um, will status at work uh, in 10 years' time be more or less determined by the following factors? So, status at work. So, at the moment, uh, it tends to be the left-hand column, which is position and hierarchy, uh, so, what's it likely to be in 10 years' time, we ask you? Is position in hierarchy likely to be more the same or less? Well, very few of you think it's going to be more. Uh, I try not to think the same, but it, uh, almost a third are saying, actually, um, they are, it's, it's going to be less than today. Uh, the position in hierarchy is, is important as far as your status is concerned. So, we're talking about the flattening of hierarchies and people's status coming from things other than just your job title, your, the trappings of your office, your, your, your important position. Um, if you go to the other end, uh, physical presence, that's probably most extreme. We're saying definitely uh, that's going to be less important than today. So more virtual working, more mobile uh, working, working at a distance. Uh, we will be more comfortable within 10 years' time, and therefore your yeah, the presenteeism culture that exists today will largely have gone as far as status of the organisation is concerned. Uh, and then a, 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 another few factors in the middle. Um, interesting, say, inspirational leadership uh, and being good at connecting uh, people are probably the two top ones as far as saying these are, will be more important than today. So connecting with people, thinking about it, if if you are working remotely, how are you then going to make sure you still get the same uh, informal uh, working with other people that you would get in the corridor conversation that you typically would get if you're physically pushed together in an office? And that's where uh, the tech networking technology, social media, and so on come in to, f to fill that gap. Uh, so that's really your views from the 
um, to the survey. They will trigger, I'm sure, some interesting comments from our panel. But let's get the, the panel up here and you can ask them questions and we can get a, get a discussion going.